I really did not know at that point whether the idea of writing a large-scale opera with a cast only of men, which had not been done before, whether that would be suitable for performance at Covent Garden on a festival occasion. None of us had ever been on a sailing ship. So Ben made a rough drawing of what we thought a three-masted schooner was like, going by what Melville told us in his story. Then I added certain corrections. I, one or two things I had slightly more knowledge than him. And then Forster took the little drawing over and he labelled everywhere Captain's Cabin in his squiggly, squiggly little handwriting, between decks, lower decks. All, up, all these strange words that he'd never encountered so that we could find our way about the ship. I've still got those three bits of paper from that very first afternoon. They are the exact genesis of the opera that finally came. That same day, Britain would jot down a rough synopsis of the story. Billy Budd, the opera, had been born. The three-man writing team began in earnest in 1949. Britain's and Forster's most significant change to Melville's novel was to emphasise the role of Captain Veer. They felt it was important to put his moral dilemma over Bud's treatment at the very heart of the opera. Britain and Forster explained why in this 1960 broadcast in which they outlined the main characters in the opera. Billy always attracted me, of course, the radiant young figure, I felt there was going to be quite an opportunity for writing nice dark music for Claggart, <laughs> but I think I must admit that Veer, who has what seems to me the main moral problem of the whole work, round whom the drama was going to centre, yes. Yes. what do you feel, Morgan? I tend to think Billy is a central figure. He names the opera, and I think I consider the things from his point of view. But I quite see the position of, of Veer as it's very easy to place him in the centre of the opera, because he has much more apprehension than poor Billy, who is often muddling about in an instinctive way. Crozier and Forster worked on the Billy Budd libretto throughout 1949. Crozier dealt with the more nautical aspects of the text, Forster the narrative slabs. At this time, Britton was hard at work with his Spring Symphony, but nevertheless kept a keen interest in the two writers' progress. Eric Crozier takes up the story. You, Ben, with us all the time, watching what we were doing, saying there are too many words there, you must reduce these lines, or here is an idea that I would like you to expand in a more lyrical form. As you were working together, um, you and Eric, one saw moments where there was a chance for the music to flower. Britain's attention to the libretto paid off. The success of this writing partnership was evident in Forster's prologue for Captain Veer. I knew the music was somehow or other to be attached to my words. And whether this somehow got into the words and put them into the right order, I don't know. It was going to be quite clearly magnificent set to music, you'd obviously become by then a very good librettist. 